Chapter 19 of Technical Communication goes through the process of writing recommendation reports. For English 1143, you are not doing a full recommendation report. Please check the assignment and double check it and triple check it in eCourses to see the nine components that you must include for the purposes of our class assignment. Why are recommendation reports so useful in the professional arena? Our book says on page 501 that a recommendation report is partly informational, but then it proceeds to more of a persuasive argument because it offers suggestions about what readers ought to do next. Take this scenario. A friend of yours comes and says, hey, I have an elective on my degree plan. What should I take? As a first step, you'd want to present information. Well, I mean, if there's an elective, you could take art, health, drama, sociology, chemical engineering, biology, human performance. You would want to give this friend all of his or her options. This is a big part of your report. But at the end of the day, you also need to make an actual recommendation. I took this really cool art course. I think you might like it. Or you might say, I heard that this teacher, this class is really only for majors, so it might not be your best bet for an elective. We make recommendations all the time. A report just makes it more formal, more detailed, and more professional. Here are some questions that could guide your recommendation. Remember, you're starting from your exercise too, but that was only a page long. Why did you make your initial recommendation to change something about your degree plan? What's not working? Then second, most administrators are interested in higher quality and or lower costs. If you can accomplish both, you're golden. Your target audience, your dean or department head, wants to see all the options that are out there. You wouldn't like it very much if you went shopping for a car and the salesperson proudly walked you over and said, here, this is the one. The one? Uh, excuse me. <laughs> Surely I have more than one choice. I want to see all of my options. I want to hear their pros and cons. And then finally, you make your recommendation. Which one is the best for your degree plan for our students here at Prairie View? To make the answers to these questions even more persuasive, you're going to use some research and sources. Often in a recommendation report, you do something called a literature review. I'm using this terminology so you're familiar with it if a professor down the road ever tells you to do a literature review. Here's what it is. It's really any collection of literature, and this can include videos, audio, web pages, materials about a topic. A literature review does not include a recommendation. It tends to be informational. No personal opinion on whether you liked this, whether the sources were easy to read, and so forth. So why do you do this? Well, I'm glad you asked. You're trying to show that you understand what's going on. You have done your research and you understand it well enough that you can summarize it for your readers so they don't have to go and read 17 studies for themselves. Now, you're not going to be looking at 17 studies. I'm just using an example. A literature review in hardcore research also sets the stage for your contribution. You don't want to do the same experiment that someone else has already done unless questions have been raised about that experiment's validity. Maybe you're tweaking something slightly. We love to do that in the STEM disciplines. We'll run the same experiment and just change the quantities, swap in a few different elements, and see what happens. A literature review says, look, I know what's going on. I can describe and explain it. And here's what I'm going to do that hasn't been done before. Honestly, that's pretty cool. When you're ready to do your literature review, you start with research. I know you're going to hear number two a lot in the next few weeks, but persistence really is key. If you have a minimum amount of sources that you need for a paper, for a literature review, for a project, find way more than that. One, 
you can pare that down to the best four sources. Two, you can use more than four sources. Funny thing, a lot of professors are impressed when you do more than the minimum. With research, as with a lot of things in life, you have to go through a lot of what, at least for you, is garbage before you find the really good stuff that's useful for your particular writing scenario. And because this is technical communication and we like graphics, here's a figure. Notice how beautifully it's captioned below. You start with a lot of literature searching. What's your topic? What questions do you have about it? What's the problem? What's your solution? In the case of a recommendation report, this is your recommendation. Your literature search gets smaller and smaller as you get to the solution. Your documentation requirements, however, go up and up. This is just one flow diagram of the research process. Some people like to do their literature search pretty constant all the way across. Some people flip this. They identify their topic, they generate questions, they state the problem, they find the solution, and then they go looking for sources to back up what they've already decided is the best idea. Don't do this. If you're going to save your literature search for the end, number one, you might find, dang, somebody already beat you to this, already proposed this solution, already did this experiment. Number two, you're supposed to search widely in literature. You're not simply supposed to go and find sources that say exactly what you want them to say. We can use sources that disagree with us. You can say, this highly regarded expert thinks the solution is a total waste of time. Explain why expert A feels this way, and then explain why expert A might be wrong in your particular situation. It is okay to disagree with sources. It not only shows that you've really understood the source you're looking at, but also that you have the confidence to take it on. What if in the process of your literature search, you're not finding enough information? Maybe your topic is too narrow. Biomedical engineering for three-year-old orangutans. Possibly too narrow. What you can do in a lot of search engines, including library databases, is to see what topic headings, what terms, what keywords are associated with the sources you did find, and then try and search for those slightly broader terms. You can use general sources for your specific research paper as well. Maybe all the sources you find say, it is good for people to know how to communicate. You can use that as a springboard for we need additional speech classes in civil engineering. Once you've gathered more than the minimum amount of sources, then what? You want to connect them. One of the most common errors that people new to research writing make is they devote a paragraph to each source. You end up with a paper that's really like several mini essays. Source A, source B, source C, source D, conclusion. Well, what does source A have to do with source D? Maybe they involve similar experiments. Maybe B and C had similar goals or took place in similar locations. You want to connect or synthesize your sources. With each source, yes, describe the highlights, but where I want you to focus is on the right-hand side here. Synthesis, make connections, the degree plan at the University of Houston, the University of Phoenix, and the University of Pennsylvania all require this class. And also explain which are most relevant. The program at the University of Colorado for Business Management has very similar goals to those of Prairie View A&M. Therefore, its degree plan is one we should pay more attention to. Students often get stuck in the summary. We assume that the highlights of the source speak for themselves. Clearly, my reader knows what's going on. He's an intelligent person. She has a PhD, after all. You need to do that synthesis. A huge part of your recommendation report is conclusions and recommendations. 
If I just say, here's the degree plan from college A, college X, college Z, we should do college X's. Thank you. Wait, what? Why? Why is college X better than the others? You need to make those connections. You need to explain relevance. If you have a lot of research that you need to get through, it can take a while to read. Here is one recommendation for getting through your sources quickly and efficiently so you can summarize. First, try and find the point. What is this source trying to say? Are there key themes? Go ahead and skim paragraphs looking for the subpoint or theme words. One of the great things about information technology is the find or search option that we can use on the web with PDFs with Word documents. Another tip, focus on the abstract, the introduction, and the conclusion. Read these really carefully. Skim the middle because there might be something interesting about the methods used, but generally the abstract is a miniature version of the entire experiment. You won't find abstracts, introductions, and conclusions on less scientific writings, but it's still a good idea to pay attention to the intro and the conclusion. So hopefully this lecture has given you some ideas for how to approach research that you might put in your own recommendation report, introduction, methods, results, conclusions, and recommendations.